With the new Intel CPUs being out, you're going to need a new motherboard, and of course everyone is trying to get your attention. So how does MSI succeed with their very popular Tomahawk series this generation? And this time around, the Z890 variant will cost you a whopping $300. Which, fun fact, for a motherboard, is kind of expensive. So what do they do to try and justify their price? While well, starting off with CPU power, here we have 16 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 power phases, rated at a maximum of 90 amps. Yes, we do have one additional phase this time around for general system power management, so that's neat. And that combined with two full A-pins for CPU power is more than enough for any of Intel's new CPUs. And memory-wise, thanks to its support for CU DIMM, this thing can take your memory all the way up to 9200 megatransfers per second, if not higher. That is just what's rated by MSI themselves. And speaking of power, you may also notice this very strange connector at the bottom of the motherboard. And it's just an additional PC power connector for any PC devices that may require a bit more juice. AI cards. It's mostly there for AI cards. What a surprise. Now speaking of PC devices, we do have, as to be expected, a primary PC Gen 5 slot, and then two additional Gen 4 4x slots underneath that, which again, well, I wish there was at least one boring old 1x slot for 1x cards to snugly fit inside. I'm also just kind of tired of complaining about that at this point. Congrats, tech industry, you're officially wearing me down. Then when it comes to storage, you do have the 4 and the 2 ports, which is on par with most of the motherboards at this time, with the main one, of course, being Gen 5, and the rest, Gen 4, plus 4 SATA connectors as well, which again, I wish it was 6, but again, I know not a lot of people need that many SATA connectors, but still, you know me, I have to point it out. What's also fairly bog standard is the fact you're getting the expected 8 internal fan connectors, and as is to be expected, 3 addressable and 1 regular non-addressable RGB connector. So that's all pretty standard stuff so far, nothing too out of the ordinary for the price. So then what about if we turn it around and look at Array I.O.? Now here's where things get interesting. While you do have 7 USB Type-A ports, which isn't the most in the world, at least all of them are Gen 3 or faster, which is pretty neat. Even though for some things like a mouse and keyboard, you obviously don't even need those speeds. Though what really stands out, and you can probably tell by this point, is the 3 Type-C connectors. One rated at 10 gigabit, and the two stars of the show, the Thunderbolt 4 connectors, aka they're both running at 40 gigabit per second. That isn't the only wild thing about a rear I.O. because you even get 5 gigabit Ethernet, which sure, not a lot of people will need, but for those that will, that saves them buying an additional networking card. Plus you also get Wi-Fi 7, just HDMI for integrated graphics, no display port here, and unfortunately, yet again, we're seeing two audio jacks and optical split only, which is yet another thing I complain about, which I know not too many people even care about anymore, but still, at this price, you'd think they would do everything in the power to justify charging you that much. And giving us something that's already been a standard on mobile boards for years would be a very easy way of doing that. And speaking of the audio, it's running of the AOC 1220p codec. And when it comes to the overall aesthetic of this thing, while it is nice and minimalist, I mean, it doesn't even come with any RGB or anything, which, hey, it's definitely a way to save a few dollars if you don't care about your PC lighting up like Las Vegas, but still, it's not anything too exciting, which may be what you're after. But still, does all of that justify a price? I mean, it really depends. Some of the stuff, like the additional USB Type-C or the 5 gig networking, if you need those things, then those are pretty awesome. I can save you money you would have spent otherwise on buying those accessories. However, for most average people, those things probably won't revolutionize the way you use your PC if you have no need for those things. So while MSI do try their best to justify the price, they do have quite a few other cheaper motherboards themselves that will get the job done equally well. But still, if the few additional bells and whistles it does have really speak to you, then our Amazon and Newegg links to it will be up in the iCards and down in the video description below. Like, those things are magic. You don't pay anything extra while we get some money that gets reinvested straight back into the channel. Down there, you're just gonna find a Patreon because even a single dollar a month truly goes a long way. Plus, huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Ella Vronyak, Bartosz Velka, Patrick Harrison, not a pseudonym, Meg Sumner, Shane Allcroft, and level up. But anyway, that's what it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.